Welcome to Shibori, a concertina accordion journal, the final pages. Many of the pieces have come by way of our arty friends. Join us as we converse through the process. Hello, this is P. And I am M. Mariah. Together we are PM, PM Artist, Artist Studio. Studio. Let's get started. Oh, I love that print up there in the corner. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> So these are many of the things that I just was digging out of the bag, plus some other things that P had given me. You saw the Shibori silk that our friend Lisa over at Sirius Hekka sent us. I've been working on that little piece up above there, and um, I don't know, like for the life of me, just couldn't get it to fit in. But remember, we even put the little, yes. I mean, we spent some time on the little <laughs> piece up there. And you didn't use it. No, never did. What I ended up doing, because this was the end or the base piece. So if you go over, I'll put a link to Lisa's video so you guys know what that piece and how it was created. And why I ended up spraying it the way that I did is because I wanted to add in the browns. And we're going very fast through this. Because I'm just, you know, I'm done with the journal, so I'm done. <laughs> this is the video. It's 45 minutes long. Speed through it if you want. Do do what you will. There's some good, uh, I think there's some value here. There's some really cool little processes. Like again, that was some paper that Lisa sent us. The um, wax dyed papers. Mm -hmm. And I had processed it even a bit whenever I first put this panel down, but then the blues again just weren't tying in. I had that problem there even with the leaf yeah, I'm, paper, I'm looking, remember? Yeah, I'm looking at that and saying, yeah. Has, the first one has more green in it. <clears throat> yes, and that was kind of the problem. Is like I kept trying to pull that out, and it well, sort of kept coming through. Yeah, you know, that's what I was talking to Mo about. And some of the indigos have more yes. of a green tinge to them. Yes, they do. they're not all. It's almost like um, ocean blue. The ocean has a bit of a greeny tinge to it, and usually your cheaper. Paints are the ones that go the green gotcha. rather than the blue. Probably because it's a harder pigment to, to come by or whatever. More or, expensive. Or yeah. the minerals or yeah. such that it takes. Well, you know, it used to be made from... Okay, just to okay. butt in real quick. The piece that I hear, the cyanotype... Right. ...is from our friend Peg at Two Old Crows. There are also some tags that I'm going to be using... And I will even bring in some crackle for business. We'll talk a bit about that. And I have some, you know, have, I can give peace more hard time about that. But um, that's what that little piece is right there. So, yes, go on about the different blues. Mm. Yes, they are tricky. Well, I think the original, and, you know, there will be somebody out there that knows this for sure. I just remember somewhere in my art history experience that. The blues were made by crushing up lapis. Well, and I thought that, um, I thought that like the shibori, the indigo, the true indigo. Oh, no, the true indigo is made from a plant. Plant, yes. Yeah. But then there are other ways to make blues, obviously, like you yeah. just said. So, yeah, comment below. Let us know what you know about blue. Well, and I think your indigo, indigo blue is more, it leans more towards the, first one over here the kind of greenish right. one and i'd love to know from lisa kind of her color you know how, how she goes about making sometimes i don't think she can repeat it <laughs> she's kind of like us she's a little mad scientist over there <laughs> she's kind of like well you know i threw this together or this that and the other <laughs> a little bit of this and a little bit of that and so there's one of the tags i chopped off the bottom well you see i folded it there and i think peg had um what she had done there was put the embossing powder, like the heat embossing, so I cracked it. I couldn't really get a lot of it to push through, which was pretty interesting. Normally I can, so I don't know. Peg's got a process that makes that stuff, even when it's cracked, I could push Im it. Impenetrable. <laughs> so that's the top piece off of the on the type that I had used and I was like ooh see if I piece that together and again one of the things and we talked about this like in the last stream or the last video or no there's going to be one coming up that we bring this up but it's a common thread it's the thread it's always telling a story you, it, these 
art journals, you know, no matter what I do, I always want to keep repetition going throughout whatever it is I'm doing, whether it's within a page and then within the journal itself. Mm -hmm. I think that is very important. So with this one, obviously the colors were a constant. The very botanical or nature feel along with the actual because I mean especially even with the cyanotype it's leaves flowers and we use that throughout many of our paper sets this is the shibori is available in our shop and I've for forgotten like that's a big set of paper like there's all kinds of cool things little circles little corner pockets mm -hmm. Which I didn't even get into with this. I basically used the smaller panels because I liked that size. And um, that was pretty much it. But you can make a really big, cool journal. I would love for somebody to do so. If you do, let me know. I'll share it. I'd like to see it. But that's one reason I kind of brought those three pieces together there being the brown mm -hmm. are two of our printable along with the cyanotype and I thought that was cool like being able to sort of flow that through and this is the cordage that um, our friend Susan Taylor Brown sent me I requested it from her she was so kind but again it had a lot of sort of tealy mm -hmm. greenish -ness to it and you'll see me hand it over here in a minute, I think. I started handing over quite a few things to P because she just so happened to be on the gel plate. And she, I was I was doing my experiments with my Yes, with the blues too. With see there the blues. You had done that for me. Oh yeah. That stompy rocks, the impression plate. Over the top of oh, leaves. Oh no, over the top of that one swirly and there's the leaf. That one oh, there, okay. there she be. <laughs> Oh, this is the this is the little bitty yes little bitty dots the shibori dots yes, and I just thought that looked so cool because it really made you kind of focus in more. But then there was the repetition of stompy rocks, which is there in the paper set right below there, plus stompy rocks on top of it as the impression plate. I mean, this a, this is a, a the trio. Stuff that, it gets me excited. I I don't know if other people think about these things or you know want to do these sorts of things let me know below this is stuff that excites me I had a little strip left of white at the top and I was trying to get it with the, um, the Posca marker was not being nice to me and wasn't the right blue anyway I mean it just <laughs> that was a little bit of a struggle glad we fast forwarded through that business I ended up covering it up and you'll see me here in a minute come back in and tuck some things there to cover it up See, it's important to keep flipping through and just see once you flip like how, where you're at, what's mm -hmm. kind of going to make sense. My very blue fingers. Look at them. <laughs> They've been blue for two days now. Talking to P about, I think, how to use this paper and what I was doing with creating the repetition through. And then there's the stompy rocks over the leaves pattern. And you can see where the dark blue is. That's where the stencil, the stencil, or the impression plate wasn't. Right. Because she was working on her bigger plate. Bigger plate. I'm trying to figure out if I had a good blue, which I did not. It's like you can see all the many colors that I have picked up at the hardware store, but have yet to pull the right shibori. And then P put that on the plate. So no, I, I didn't. Did I just brayered over the Oh, top yeah, that's right. <laughs> I just put it down brayer. You were over. having funky bits with your brayer then. I was. I've got to. <laughs> oh my goodness. It was terrible today. I had liked that color. It was sort of there, but not really. And then I was like, okay. I didn't know if I wanted to do a full panel with Lisa's Shibori silk that she sent us. Um, that tag that I had just shown there was some lovely bits that Susan Taylor Brown had also sent and you can watch that in a previous Shibori video. I 
finally decided just to cut those two pieces apart because <laughs> it was just too fat <laughs> to stick in the pocket with it folded back. And I was like, oh, that's okay. Gives me two little taggy things to play with. I overcut because these darn the paint swatch things, which I guess I didn't really show. I must have turned the camera off, but basically what I did is I glued over one of the tags that had been textured with Stompy Rocks. And I'm just using my decorative scissors to fray up the edge and make it a little more, you know, not you a straight of, cut. You need one of those, those paper fraying devices. Yeah, I know. Well, I was thinking about that as I was doing that. Pete was telling me about it the other day. She just thought it was, and those were the stamps that you found. So I was like, oh, I'm going to use that. It looked good. I liked that process. And it brought in a little bit more of that bluish, or, or the kind of greenish blue. Mm -hmm. Which was important because mm -hmm. it, keep, it kept showing up here and there. And I'm like, I cannot obliterate it. So I need to incorporate it. Yep. <laughs> Repeat it. it. Either incorporate. <laughs> or obliterate. Obliterate. <laughs> don't, don't, went, don't just go a little bit. <laughs> Right. <laughs> well, and that's it was, nice because it it made the back go with the front. Exactly. It, it was coming through on the fabric, and there was no way. I mean, I, I probably could have, but that thing would have been so dark. <laughs> yeah. And then it would have sort of been, you know, here nor there. So, uh, there I am doing the tedious little work that Pete just like why even bother? But because on the paint swatches. They're still wording and such. Bless you. <clears throat> oh, goodness. She might go for 20 minutes. I'll have to stop the... <laughs> Allergies. Allergies. So, I did the three little leaves. Brought in some of the tissue paper, textured tissue paper stuff, too. Did you use that one that I... All right, yes, yeah, so there we go. My little Stompy Rock Shibori Silk tag. And it has a pocket inside. It does. There's. Is, did you want to find something to stick no, in there? No, I haven't found anything to put in there. That's kind of a secret pocket. It so is a secret should, pocket. It could be something very Secret note. Secretive. <laughs> it's like rocks between. See, doesn't it? It looks kind of yeah, like looking down into the water, which I felt was very Shibori-like. I don't, I don't know why, but... Oh, I feel? really, yes, I really love it. I, I just, um, who, who knew that stompy rocks over the top of yeah. bubbles. See, and there's, there's how it started is kind of like one of those with the texture paste over. Yeah, the because tag. I just kind of went ahead and did a whole bunch of them because yeah. I had the stencil going and I remember that well, now. Yeah. That was quite a while ago. Yeah, usually whenever you're doing texture paste or whatever and she asked me, <laughs> do you have anything... I'm like, well, just do a few tags here and there because they're nice things to have on hand. You know, it's like... What yeah, because say? you don't like just the... texture paste and decide you're going to use it right then. Oh, that's it, right. You have a bit of downtime. <laughs> it's nice to have it all, like, dried up and ready to go. So, that was, that was very nice to have that on hand. And that it was Stompy Rocks because that was really going with my theme. For sure. From the leaves to the flowers... It's all earthy elements. Well, and then it's even funny because, you know, the gears, that's the old gear stencil that finally be retired. We've decided it has more of a flower motif here. Yes. So this is the paste? Or yes. Oh, this is wow. the Ranger Distress. Yeah, I held it up for a lot longer than there, but this is going very fast. But yeah, it's the Ranger Distress. And, and just... that dried overnight. I pushed it. it. It took most of the evening. Oh, and so then it then the same it, day. As it was drying, I cracked it more. So it's kind of like it, it would dry to the interior, you know. Oh, and so you cracked, cracked it, it so that the air could get more towards the... Yeah, that was kind of my... Did it work? Yeah. I don't know. It's, you just have a thing huh. with that stuff. He has bought three brands and one of them worked for her. 
but I, I'm, con- I've I'm convinced go. that I just didn't use enough stuff. Yeah, I think so. Because, I, like I said, I found your test stuff, and it was like, she put a thin layer. You don't put a thin layer, you put a thick. Well, the one that I put a thick on, it was over some red stuff, and it looked like somebody had bled out. And no, I saw, that was the one that I saw, and it, it was not good. No, it, it wasn't it was good. Still, still not thick enough. It wrinkled the paper. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with all that. I, I've had very great success. <laughs> Look at that. Doesn't that just... The, yeah. the flow there is mm-hmm. very happy. Now, once I get down and bring open up some of those other panels, the cyanotype didn't make sense to leave it white. So you'll see some of that coming up here in a second. Or in a minute. There's my little scrappy bit left over. I was like, I'm going to use that on something. Don't you know I did? Mm-hmm. Oh, and I have to say about the, the string that she was talking about handing stuff across. The oh, yeah, there it is. It's been... Okay, well, it even... <laughs> it, it has been recorded. It, it, I have it on the back of one of my gel plate. Yes. Because uh, she did it on the plate. <laughs> I, I, and I, I had it wrapped around my brayer. It was kind of a... Is that what you were like? Yes, I was having a cow. It was like, oh, my God. <laughs> thing is attack my brayer. <laughs> I've been having brayer issues yeah, here lately. Yeah. I mean. You need to I, I started some sage out, or I started <laughs> you know kidding you got some bad juju on your brayer. Yeah. So see I was just saying all right I'm kind of looking back at the the tag that I keep bringing it back in to see and that's when I would crack it a bit more. All right the cover. So this is the front cover. And originally, this is not at all like what I had planned, but then I was just like, I have to go with what makes sense now that the other panels are down. And we keep talking about that. Like, don't push it. Just because you have an idea in your head does not mean that it has to stay that way. Because you, you, sometimes you're just, you're not going to get past that. It, it And it just, it just makes you unhappy. Mm-hmm. And usually it makes whatever you produce at that point seem forced and yeah and and not um and once I kind of yeah let go of my my thought process of what I thought this should be versus what it has become I was so much happier and I know better I just uh, Chibori's been a tricky one for me oh my goodness it's been on the board how long (laughs) months she talks about it all the time I do I feel like I've talked about it for probably about half a year now at least six months. Six months. At least. Um, one of the reasons that I like using the PVA glue on these larger panels to do, like, exactly what you just saw me do, is that you can position the paper better. If you use art glitter glue, it, it, it dries way too fast. And then, unless you are committed and you know what you're doing, <laughs> it does not give you a lot of room for wiggle. Mm-hmm. In fact, none. And it usually glue it, it starts to dry almost immediately, and you'll have bumps. The PVA glue is meant for this type of process. Like it, it allows you to spread it, and some room to to move it. But then it also takes longer to dry. But with this, it's okay. Oh, you, at this point, you yeah. just work on another page for a while. Now I'm mapping out, because you see the cordage there, and you see my awesome leather punch, which, tell you what, if you don't have one of those, highly recommend it. If you're punching heavy things. For the chipboard, man, no problemo. But problem is, is that it doesn't reach to the center. Yeah. So, I was like, I'm going to do all the ones that I can, so I have nice clean holes. And then I'll punch the rest. And that's when I ask for the little yoga mat and the, you know, stabby puncher. <laughs> yeah, we're not really... It's more sh- an owl, I guess. Is all. All. There we go. I always want to say owl. Who knew? <laughs> oh, giggle, giggle. <laughs> See, sometimes my brain, it like knows the word, but then it's like... It doesn't come out right. <clears throat> you know, I have that other one that has a smooth, smoother backside that you can really get behind it and give it a uh, good well, punch. It, it, hey, this punched really quite easily. 
I, I, I liked this one very much. Now, you, you have those fluffy bits that sort of punch through, but I knew the way I was going to do this, most of it wasn't going to show through. There's still a little bit that kind of did, but I'm okay with that. Now, let me tell you, I would love to say, and I, and I sort of, sort of planned it out. It's position, how long it was, and what I was going to do. Now, did I know that it was truly going to line up properly? No. <laughs> but it did. I got very lucky that I had enough to run from the front and then back up and around and then back to the front. Okay, so what basically you did is you, you didn't you didn't stitch with your cordage, you stitch your cordage on with thread. Yes. And I did this on the boho oh, yeah, in a I very similar that. way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now that one I did a lot in a, in a, a much harder way because I did it at the same time, the front and the back with two different pieces. Oh. This I did one way. Well, you yeah, and then came back. You, you didn't you didn't know how much of your you were going to need and you just had that one length. Yes. And I didn't feel like trying to Well, I'd sort of learned on that first one that you can do it this way where I have sort of a structure I know which direction I'm gonna go. Mm -hmm. And I knew I was going to cover up the orange thread that you're seeing over on the back side. And I know that there's a term for this type, but like it's almost couching, oh, is it couch? No, um, almost like. I, I don't know that much about I know. embroidery. Yeah. I don't know how to do some few stitches. Hey, and if it. somebody is watching and you do know the term, let me know. Because I, I, I feel like it's couching or something similar to that technique of going yeah. over a fatter piece. Yes, to hold it in place. To hold it in place. It. Yeah. So. Susan probably would know. Yeah. Let us know. <laughs> so... Oh, the other cool thing that I did here, and I don't know if you saw that yet, that or noticed, because it is going quite fast. I started out with lighter orange and then switched to a darker orange. No, I did not notice that. It's very subtle. I'm sure P would probably say, okay, yeah, that was not even Boy, really. that really yeah, knocked it bowled up. me over. Yeah, but see, <laughs> it's little things like that. And I'm like, okay, you know, somebody will notice. Or I'm going to call it out and make sure that you do because <laughs> I was quite proud of myself with that whole business. I just figured you couldn't find the same one. No, I totally. That would be why. I, I totally found the same one. And I flipped it back and did it again on the back side. Well, How about that? there you go. Yeah. If you make a mistake, just repeat it and people will think that it's intentional. It was not a mistake. She thinks that it's a mistake. I'm telling you, it's not. I had to glue down the edge. That's I kept I... catching on it. <laughs> and what's so funny is I don't think you... I, I was watching this earlier when I was doing the editing to see when I poked my finger because I did it about three or four times. But it's moving fast enough that you're not noticing that. I do apologize for being kind of down off of the screen, but after a while with your arms stretched out, <laughs> it gets a little tricky doing that. Well, I decided I've got tennis elbow from oh, brayering. Yeah. You know, I think you need to lay off the brayer. Or use my other arm. Yeah, you can start becoming ambidextrous. Ambidextrous brayer. Ing. 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 <laughs> so, a lot... Oh, and the other thing that I would do is come back through and hook it on to not only, like, through the hole. So, you go up and down and around and hold it into the hole. But then, using the line of thread that I already had there to come back in and do loops because I wanted more of the orange to show on this side. I didn't do that on the other side, on the cover. I wanted more of the orange to start becoming apparent on this side. Well, it'd be really interesting if you didn't had a little more contrast here. I can't even tell what you're doing by the, with the, well, like I'm just telling you. I, I'm trying to look at it, but it just, it looks like you're sewing blue on blue and I, I am not. It's orange. Do you think I should zoom in? <laughs> well, 
you know, if you have old people watching this, this is not going to be very riveting. Just telling you. I don't, maybe if you had it on the big screen, I'm looking at it like. Yeah. This is like a sixth of the screen. Right? Yeah. I'll try to zoom in a bit more during this. I, I really do like, I really do like this effect of this. And I'm thinking how I could do this with, I can do this on one of the covers of my art journal. Oh yeah. Cause you, you you're going to do a, I'm going to do a whole journal. Y'all A fabric one. I'm going to do a fabric one. And I don't know that you need a hard cover for a fabric one, but I, I think I kind of want one to maybe yeah. hold it together. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm getting my chindi undone right now, so. <laughs> the chindi's causing the allergies, too. Oh, man. <laughs> it's, it's got a weird smell about it as well. <laughs> well, I kind of think I figured out what, what they do is they wet it. Oh, to make the thing. And this reminds me because the cordage See, I, that I, you've I, got got there. I mean, I don't know how Susan really makes it, but... She has videos. She kind of just rolls it mm -hmm. and wets it. So, yes. But that's what they're doing with the chindi, and that's why they have these little rolled up things that you try to undo them. And you can't. You just have to take them in and wet them and they kind of... Come apart. Come apart. Well, there you go. Chindi and cordage. Yeah. So I was just, this is the piece that wrapped back over and I did come in with just the blue thread because again, I didn't want that to be as apparent that I just sort of brought it through, but I wanted it to to hang in a certain spot. So that's what I did there. Coming in and trying to just touch up those little bits of fluffy bit from the punch through. Mm -hmm. And see, and I had the to, white paper. yeah, and I had to punch through on the what other is, what side. What was that? What was what? That stuff there. The beads. Oh. And I think it was a jar that you had given Izzy at one point, or she had spilled something, and then it ended up in the little jar. But I was like, oh man, those are perfect. Or maybe we used it for something else. I, I can't think, remember. I think I made a um, one of those dangle things. I forgot what you maybe. call it. Maybe. But it was all like coppery and perfect and the little leaf thing just was spot on i wish there were three i would have put three on if there were three but there were only two so i went with one well i think what the, what that was you know, promise that's not her baby upstairs. Upstairs. yeah <laughs> uh there was it was the makings of an earring mm, that makes and sense that, why there was two yeah <laughs> there and that's why there's probably two of everything in there and i i just I, I just got bored with it and dumped it in a yeah container. I do that all the yeah. time. I I'm terribly. Uh, I'm, that's how I store things. I just dump it all together. One of these days, I'm going to be able to get to my beads and get more done with those. Yeah. And then I did three little ones there, and then I did one kind of. That little larger, semi-larger bead. They're all pretty tiny. And then three of the little ones again. But with the orange thread. Because I just thought that was kind of... Yeah. Purposefully. Con well, it's, it's lovely contrast. It Thank really you. Is. I mean, I know that it doesn't show up so wonderfully here. But you'll see here at the end with the close-ups of things that um, we can yeah, show those a bit more. That contrast there. All right, and then, okay, so I made this tag a long time ago. <laughs> well, you made it, and then I did some stuff to it. Yeah. It was kind of like, we handed it back and forth. Was this one of the ones that we designed when we were doing that tag thing for, um... Maybe. Oh, I think I think it was because we were both designing tags, and I, I think I got this yes. far, and I said, okay, I think I'm done. And then, so I added the, because you can tell with the torn bits. If there's torn bits on it, that's me. That's not P. No. At all. No, that's not entirely true. I did make some torn bits on one of the, something I made once. I know, but you like, if it's a torn edge like that, it's mine. 
if it's using the deckled edge ruler thing, that's yours because you love that thing. That is not so. I even remember what tag it was. <laughs> It was I added a little bit more copper throughout too, just to repeat. I don't even think it was. I think it was like a page of something. I can't remember. Hmm. I'm going to find it and show it to you. Will do. Stay tuned. Oh, it was the one that I did the purple. Hmm. Well, I don't know. I went with the finger method. <laughs> on, the, on the thumb. I was basically trying to use up the bit of coppery, you know, the Arteza. Oh, it's, what yes. is it? Copper, gold, whatever. It's like all the it colors is. together. I don't know. <laughs> it's all the Copper, metallic. gold, pearl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, somebody knew about marketing there. Yeah, they're like, you know what? We'll just put all the names in, the, in there and then that way it'll be searchable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, there we go. And see how wonderfully that dried up and the color just, mm -hmm. just knocked back that little bit of greenishness. Plus then it made the leaves come through. Now I'm putting a little thing in the pocket there. What is it? My, you know, how I like to make little stuffy things to stuff in places. That's basically what it is. I guess I missed that in the... No, and then I showed it to you. And you're like, well, what is that? <laughs> I'm just said, oh, why is that? Yeah, why is that? <laughs> what function is that performing? Nothing. Especially with the fluffy bit. Aha, uh -huh. she's fluffy bitten it. <laughs> I should have guessed that that was, that was why. Uh -huh. Put a little fluffy fluffiness in there. See, look at that. But after. But if you decide you don't like it and the fluffy wears off and whatever, you can just pull it out and you can just, you Turn know, it off. put another little <laughs> thing. thing there. <laughs> Serves no purpose. Or you can save your save your quotes from the Chinese uh, fortune cookies and glue them down on your little bed. <laughs> Boy, she's real she's real pleased with herself on that one. <laughs> well, I could talk to you about rhinoceros. Oh god, it's yeah, been quite will. the day. Oh well, if people make it this far in the video, well, get this. Please comment below. You can put a needle on the end, use it for a dart. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. Uh, little stabby knife. <laughs> yeah, really. In case somebody's it's making fun of your journal. <laughs> annoying you. You could oh. pull, pull out your fluffy bit and stab them. <laughs> Feeling that, that need right now. <laughs> well, thankfully she doesn't have that hair. <laughs> don't uh, even see any sharp objects. I'm safe. So P was very nice and ordered me those uh, sorry bits there. Because those are really pretty, pretty, like, actual silk ones that are... Just very lovely. Well, I ordered them so long ago, I forgot I ordered them. And I was like, wow, those are really pretty going pretty, good. Yeah. Those come from. <laughs> I just using up some of the other smaller pieces and bits and things. And see, I really have no concept of how to cut. Because it has that curved edge. Oh, so I always little... cut the wrong way. Like I really, it needs to flare up. So when you flap it back in, it's con, yeah, convex rather than con, and you concave it. Yeah, I mean, I could fold it over and I could have done it properly, but you know, there you go. Just something to keep in mind. Well, you could have just whacked it off and made it. That's kind of what I did. Straight across. And then did you chomp it? No. Oh, you mean like the actual tag itself? Yeah. No, I yeah, I left it like it is. And then I wanted to repeat that what I have in the little band there underneath the leaves actually on the journal because this is going to go in that sort of belly bandy. I don't know. Is it a band? It's not a sash because it doesn't go sideways. I should turn that into a pocket because it keeps sliding out. That would be my feeling. And then I wanted to repeat again just that little bit of metallicness on all the leaves. Repeat, repeat, repeat. Then it all makes sense. Plus it just looks cool. Now as I see the leaves are still white, when did they become ombre? What do you mean? The little white. Oh, that's coming up. It's coming. It's coming up. There we go. 
There goes a fluffy bit. We can't exactly decide where we want to stick that little dude, but by golly, it's going to go in it's there. It's going in there. I spent some time working on that bad boy. It's going in. I'm going to sneak it out and put See, it. See, look at all that stuff, and I just barely tapped the surface. I didn't use any of those pie-shaped things. No, and I really wanted to. I sort of made my own. I'm not, you know, I don't know. You know? I don't know. You just finished up using a whole piece of paper. You didn't want to drag out another one. And Yeah, I got a little dark with this, I must say. But it's okay. I'm trying to Did you make this. some good paper towels? Not really, because they got kind of mucked up. Did you let them stick together? I Yeah, kind of. Sometimes those sprays are gooey and gluey yeah. and they don't come apart. Well, well, and I have glue on my thing, too. Oh. So I think I was picking up some of that and it just see from yeah, yeah, all that yeah, business. Yeah, I see that. And the best way to do these little tags is by just pushing it in with your finger to get it in that texture paste. And then I love the... Yeah, the, 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 bonk, big, the bonker, bonker the big, brush. Bonker brush, yes, that's what we call it. Oh, I had to take it away from Izzy the other day. I thought it had moved. Yeah. Yeah. She was bonking. I told her I was going to bonk her. <laughs> I'm bonk her with the bonker brush. <laughs> I said, I'm going to brush your hair with that brush. But, and then I was trying to rough up the edges again. Yeah, I see like that. I, like, <laughs> two different types of cigarettes. I'm like, oh my gosh. I just need to give that up. I'm probably just... And then I thought, okay, well, I'm just going to go ahead and piece some of this together spend some time this here section or this tag oh that was a little rough sometimes when you're just using in pieces you have to be a bit more creative see piecing it in <laughs> and then it sort of kept fluffing out on me i think you're supposed to go with the fluffing out yeah i wanted and i did see it i left that because they even surged the edges. Well, it's not really surged, but it's the stuff. You, you know, get, when things are yeah. machine woven and they have that mm -hmm. tighter weave, so it holds together. And so I kept that. I was like, mm, I like that. Plus, I thought it was cool to flip it and bring it around. And this is one of my favorite papers. I just this is from your artwork with the swirly drawing. No, I know I didn't even recognize it. <laughs> so funny. I'm like, I really like that. I like that. Who did Where'd that? Where'd we get that? <laughs> oh, it's mine. Oh, oh okay. By that the time the... Mariah gets this through <laughs> running it through the computer, it's not recognizable as such anymore. I mean, if yeah, I really... I think, the, I think the original is kind of grayish and has some purple tones and... It's larger... <laughs> Oh, and also those are, that's artwork that I did years ago. Oh, yeah. Sometimes we just kind of go through the, the stack of old stuff. And I'm like, oh, let's do something with that. <laughs> that's how I came up with the pages for my journal. <laughs> yes. And I really, I still have another whole box that I haven't tapped into. Now I'm coming back because I was like, okay, mm -hmm. I liked what was happening there and I needed to tone back the white because it was fighting with what was going on in the smaller patterns. That's why that needed to happen. And I tried to bring back a little bit <laughs> or kind of blot it out and bring some of it down below. So that's why I did the picket fences there on the sponge. So that was a good move. Like, it was it really, a good move. I was a little scared because I'm like, oh God, here I am at the, almost at the end of creating all this. That, that's always a, a bit of a now, scary did you put moment. Some, I thought you put some stuff on that to I kind did. of tone back the white. I'm still waiting for it to dry. Oh, it's this Every is the, time it comes in, crackle. that's what I'm cracking. <laughs> I'm going, oh, here we go. Go. Oh, no. Finally, she's going to do something no, to that. Not yet. White leaf. <laughs> and what's crazy is it really, if you see it, in the beginning, if you want to kind of slow down the video, um, it wasn't that white. And so the distress crackle did that to it. Now, this is my 
and it, it it stayed pretty dark. Like it's it's pretty dark, but I'm okay with that. I'm surprised you didn't swish it some, with some picket fence. I don't know if that would. That that might have had some things happening that weren't not necessarily desirable. Yeah, because you have to keep in mind that you there's that rich dye. Oh yeah, well here this is the thing that you should do. You should pour out a little bit and take it, put it on your brush and then dot it and let the let it spread. I don't know if it's gonna do that. Like I'm gonna have to wet it first for mm -hmm. that to happen. Oh yeah, and then you've got a card underneath that's gonna be dissolving. Maybe. I don't know. Well we need that might be worth it an experiment. Yeah. Mirror, mirror man. Mirror mirror. But I'll tell you, that ribbon went beautifully with it. I was pretty stoked about that. And I decided that thing was too long. And then we were discussing the right copper, the copper tone. <laughs> well, I spent all this time doing that really beautiful iridescent. I asked you if you were okay I with that. I didn't care. I'd already given. She wanted to talk about I it. I didn't though. even remember it. But then she was working on the the rug thing and just so happened that there was sort of a coppery piece there. Because, see, that didn't go because what would have been great is if it was blue, but it was green. Like, green. Mm -hmm. Yes, like, pousy wowsy green, not just a little bit green. I had some ribbons that had sort of, like, parts of them were good, but then, see, that was too pinky and kind of no, reddish. Shiny. Yeah. And, and not a, good shiny. And not fluffy. So this is the piece that was off of, or some pieces off of the rug. See, I really needed, to, I had to wait on the whole Shibori journal for these things to happen. Exactly. All and these pieces I, I to think come that together. That's, that's something that people should think about because when you, when you're in that place where you're forcing things to happen just because you think that that's what should mm -hmm. happen, usually the results are are not good. Yeah. And, um... Uh, so there yeah, we go. Is, and you washed it for me. I, uh, oh, <laughs> yeah. It was, so just, it was just... That's a very odd, like, kind of moldy smell. And I know it's just because it was... Right, the wetness. It was put in a container with a whole bunch of other slightly wet stuff. And came across the ocean that way. Yeah. And you wouldn't even smell too good if you... And these are some of our very, like, our original rusty metal little... They're paper, but, you know, they look like rusty metal. I did um, put the heat embossed... Heat embossed them. To oh, kind of really? seal them up and make them look more coin-like. The, that one I didn't. That one had enough Mod Podge on it that it was quite all right. Those other two hadn't been Mod Podged, That's and I didn't want to wait I got for that. Tired of doing that. Yeah, and I didn't want to wait for that business. So oh. there you go. And I used the rest of my little bits of the silk from Lisa. And look at that. Even that little piece. I was like, oh, that's perfect. I'm gonna glue that there. And then the two little tags can hang out together. They can be friends. With the fluffy bit tag. Yeah. And those are some washers that the reason my fingers are really, really blue is that I had pushed more blue into them. And what I did is left a little lift on either side. Because see, I couldn't slide it over because it actually has a fold there. But this is going to hold the ribbon for the outside of the journal. Because one of my big gripes is like half the time I'm losing them like w when we show them or mess around with them. So it's nice that it has something to keep it on there but yet not in the way. In the way. And there she is. There she is. And then I added some more tags. I took out, um, I stole the kimono tag <laughs> from Cloudy Seaside because it needed to be in here. I took the geisha tag from Dragonfly along with the Shibori information that we had in that journal as well because they all needed to be over here. This and those is, are their little their tags. forever home. Yeah, I think this is their forever home. They really went perfectly. I was going to try to reproduce that, but I was like, why am I doing that? It gets kind of mucked up in the cloudy seaside and then see that's the geisha girl with the Shibori. That's the paper that we had mm -hmm. folded in with the techniques. 
But I was kind of sad you didn't use any of the shiboris that we folded. I know. Maybe just a special little journal for it. A packet. Hmm. There you have it. There it is. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video and you hung out to the end, please uh, let us know. Give us a comment. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And don't forget to ring that bell. Bye. Bye.